damn fool. Hello and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name is Connor McKenna. I'm Carl Stout. I'm Omar Guerrero. And today we're here. Oh, now this is a milestone issue. This will blow your minds, guys. We are doing Marvel 2 and 1, The Thing 94. I'm just kidding. This issue is, like, insanely unremarkable. Um, <laughs> in my opinion. I don't know how you guys felt about it. We'll go We'll go into it, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was surprised. Uh, I read... I was, like, three quarters through, and I'm like, nothing's really happened yet. They've just been investigating. Yeah, it's just... It's, just it's a cool idea uh, that we, we mm-hmm. kind of get the gist of the cover. Uh, so we have um, the thing fighting Power Man and Iron Fist in, like, on an arcade game. Yeah. Uh, so originally that didn't really click in my head for some reason that it was on an arcade game. I just kind of... But, uh, yeah, that's kind of a theme of this comic. When, I was, when, I, uh, when this came out, and I first, or that when it came out, when I first saw the cover way, way, way back, I thought he was going to be fighting Arcade. They were going to be fighting Arcade from the X-Men. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Could have been, yeah. Um, the cover artist is Ron Wilson as well. Um, actually, I like the cover. I think Iron Fist is a bit chunky, yeah. but, like... <laughs> yeah, because he's he's uh, pixelated. Yeah, good. Yeah, actually, yeah, good point. I was just thinking, like, a, you know, he is a video game character as well. So, yeah, they're supposed to look like video game characters. So that's and fine. the buttons say punch and duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen on any arcade machine I was familiar with, but maybe it was like that back in the '40s where Carl's from. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, the cover artist, Ron Wilson, uh, the writer is David Kraft, anchor is Ricardo Villamonte, uh, penciler is also Ron Wilson, colorist is George Russo, and letterer is Joe Rosen, editor is Jim Salakrup, uh, editor-in-chief Jim Shooter. Yeah, uh, what, what do you guys have to say about the cover? The writer, uh, David Anthony Kraft, he passed away just, um... Uh, I think a month and a half ago. Wow. Aren't you just a flurry of good news, Omar? Just bring down the whole <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we can end it now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I just saw a lot of tributes from uh, some of the comic creators about him. And he also wrote an issue, uh, a story from... Uh, uh, what? Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, uh, right. a story on Iron Fist. Yeah, just I, I think just a one shot. He seemed to write a lot of like Defenders and She Hulk. I mean, he's got there's like a lot of stuff he's written. Yeah, um, but this yeah. is this is the first time. If it's not the first time I've heard of him, it's the first time I kind of I don't know. Um, remembered, uh, you know. But yeah, he wrote he wrote a few things. I'll just look him up. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you guys think of the cover? It's decent. It's different. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's different. You know, it's, uh, you, you know that you're not supposed to take the issue seriously when you see this. Hmm. <laughs> oh, he did some Richard Dragon as well. Mm, Mark yeah. Martz, yeah. Uh, over at DC. Um. Okay. I wonder if he he co-created Shiva, Lady Shiva. Oh, did he really? Uh, no, I, I'm wondering because if he wrote, if she, if he wrote uh, uh, Richard Dragon. Oh, he um, he only wrote two issues. Here. Ah, just uh, two issues. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he wrote well, he wrote a lot of World's Fighters, I think, but yeah, um, yeah. So I like on the first page. On the left, it has. Power Man, Iron Fist, and the Thing running through this maze, and some other guy. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a neat touch. Yeah, yeah, cool. that's cool. Yeah, the Pac-Man vibe. Yeah, it was a bit Pac-Man. Um, 
I mean, it was this is what nineteen eighty four? No, no, wouldn't it? No. Nineteen eighty two. Nineteen eighty two. Yeah. When was Pac Man? Pac Man wasn't that early, was it? Oh, it had to be. I was playing that when I was a kid. Hell, I had it on the Atari. Yeah, it must have been, yeah, around this time. Maybe even earlier, I don't know. Uh, 1980. 80? Yeah. Okay, okay so... Miss Pac-Man was probably already out then. Right, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Pac-Man's hard. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, I guess all those old games are, like Donkey Kong as well, but man, yeah. Um, so we, we start off with, uh, the story's called The Power Trap. And we start off with... Dun, dun, dun. It's Alice, right? Uh, Alicia. Alicia, sorry. Um, it's Ben Grimm's girlfriend. Uh, one of her traits is that she's blind, and that's like a whole uh, thing with their relationship, because she felt his, like, rock face. Yeah, she's and, a sculptor. Yeah, she's a sculptor, so she feels people's faces, and, like, she... Yeah, she has a really good sense of touch, and she carves them. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got some real thugs here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look uh, out. You got mention headbands and everything. Yeah, they look like they're from the Warriors. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, totally a blatant rip-off of Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe that's just what games looked like back then. <laughs> they're the war gods. Yeah. Only on TV yeah. and movies did gangs look like that. Yeah. <laughs> the war gods, yeah. Um, they're not nice. Jackets. And they look like they're all 12. Yeah. And the, the, I, I will say, I do like the art in this issue. Um, oh, yeah, it's definitely got decent art for the age, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. That's his thing. So they start harassing her, because she doesn't say hi to them, even though she's blind. And they know she's blind, but, you know, they're just being jerks. And they want to steal her, um... They think what she's carrying might be valuable. And it's not... Valuable. And then they pretty much just start assaulting her. Like, they throw the... Um... Like, this is pretty rough. Like, yeah, they're shoving her around, but then they throw her... Oh, it gets downright disturbing. Like, they're gonna drag her into this old abandoned building and just rape the hell out of her. It's... it's just like, how did this get passed? Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Uh, somebody to rescue her. I didn't get the sexual assault okay. vibe, but um, m- m- when you look at the way the panel's drawn, it's yeah, it's uh, why <laughs> this is a bad neighborhood? Like, but it looks like it's just one side of the street that's bad. The other side of the street might be fine, but um, then luckily, uh, this guy just starts throwing bricks and rocks at all of them. And originally I thought, oh, this is going to be a guy with, like, superpowers. But, uh, <laughs> like, it's going to be The Thing, or this is going to be Iron Fist, or Power Man, but it's just, uh, some dude. And you think he has superpowers, but no, he's just an ordinary dude. Spoiler. Um, well, an ordinary millionaire. Yeah, but, like, look at the way he's throwing all those bricks and stones. Like, he, oh, yeah. he scared off an entire gang. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really well, looked like it was Iron Fist. Yeah. Before we jump just too far into this, yep. I thought it was kind of funny they even mentioned her white cane, which is never white in a single panel. <laughs> and the neighborhood is so bad that if you look on the panel where the guy is throwing her art portfolio into her chest, there's just random knives and daggers laying on the ground, including now two copies of Ben Grimm's face. Yeah. And they also call him ugly. Yeah. This face is even uglier than yours, Ace. Um, I don't... Oh, yeah, there's... Yep, yeah, I see the knives now. I didn't see them before. Just laying about. <laughs> we just put, like, yeah, an assault they... rifle there. I thought when they brought out the... The... Ben Grimm, the thing's uh, face Ace, there. Yeah. yeah. Ace mask, or maybe a... a pattern that she was supposed to follow that uh, that was Ben Grimm's cue to come in but did it yeah it's nope. this guy a uh, millionaire who we'll find out more about um, 
but he helps her. He picks up her stuff and takes her home. You know, because it's a it's a bad neighborhood. Walks but he, her safely home in a bad neighborhood. He's like a really weird all about ranter. This. <laughs> like yeah, he, just, he doesn't shut up. Yeah, he just starts ranting I, all the time. Um, I can't I can't tell you about what's going on with me because the powers of be could come after you, but I won't stop talking about it for the next seven pages. <laughs> and it's like, let him drop you home, but don't invite him inside. <laughs> Uh, I love her studio, though. I thought it was really cool to see all these figures. Because you always wanted a random sink hanging out of the wall with a five-gallon pail under it? Of course you would notice this. Like, there's a whole... Look, everyone, there's this big panel of all these, like, the Sandman, Namor, Miss Fantastic, all these sculptures, and then Carl notices the sink buried in the corner. It's just so random. <laughs> well, she's got to wash her hands, you know? Yeah, it has to be somewhere he, she can uh, get to easily. Yeah. And we have the watcher, which is pretty funny. So, I can understand her needing to wash her hands, but why would she need the mirror? So it doesn't she say <laughs> she sculpts right? No. Um, and, like, she feels the person and she sculpts it. Was she... Because, like, uh, I'm not... I don't know much about this character, Alicia, so there might be some Fantastic Four or Thing people listening and being like, man, you don't know anything. Well, yeah, I, I don't. But, like, does it, does she, <laughs> like, touch people and then mould it from that? Because initially I'm like, when did she, like, touch the Watcher's head? But then I realised <laughs> most of these guys are super villains. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's true. You got like yeah, Super Scroll, uh, Sandman. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean they're nice. There's Doctor Doom, Silver Surfer. Yeah. It that's her superpower because uh, she's the daughter of uh, Puppet Master. Boy. Yeah. Wait, what? Really? Yeah, she's Puppet Master's daughter. <laughs> See, I didn't know that at all. So I only know her from like the the original Silver Surfer arc in the, the animated show. Um, you know. mm. uh, but yeah, this guy's still ranting. Um, but she's, like, helpful. She's like, you know... Yeah, ben maybe Ben help can you. help you. Yeah, because Ben and Alicia are going out with each other. Um, and so she feels his face and starts sculpting his mug out of clay. So why is... Well, while, what if, while he's ranting. Why does his face look so weird in that one panel? Like, originally I thought, wait, is she, like, molding, transforming his face? Because <laughs> his eyes were all weird and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with his eyes in that panel. I love, I also love that, like, portrait of the thing just in the background in that panel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it just makes me laugh. Like, he's just... What a rockhead. Um, I love the thing, though. Uh, the thing, actually, the portrait of the thing is in a few panels. It looks like he's looking down at them in that one. Um, always watching. Yeah. Yeah. I like always that. Thinking, always thinking she's cheating on him or going to leave him constantly to the point where it gets old. Yeah, I mean, I... Yeah, uh, I can... I'm, I mean, that that's obviously, like, the usual melodrama of comics from this age. Mm-hmm. But... I feel like I could understand that for the thing. I feel like he would be that paranoid and self-conscious. Yeah. Because um, yeah. he he probably feels it's, like, too good to be true. Mm-hmm. And, like, I guess I can give that a pass, him being so, you know... I, I have no idea about their history. I would like to think they ended up staying together, but it's comic, so they probably didn't. Um, I think at one point she even cheated on him with Johnny Storm, believe oh it or not. Oh, my That, that might have been a what-if, so I can't remember. I wasn't a huge uh-huh. regular reader. Yeah. You'd heard if it was a what-if. I don't think... Oh, God, Johnny. What are you doing? I can't remember when when that happened. It, it really happened in real life, but he, she didn't cheat on Ben. I think uh, it was when Ben was in, the, in uh, Battle World. After Secret Wars. So, uh, Ben, Ben asked to be left behind. And then that's when Johnny and Alicia started the relationship. I hate it. Right? <laughs> Anybody remember that? 
I, I don't because I didn't read <laughs> Secret Wars, but I hate it. Thanks. Um, you know, that's another reason that mine is no longer Marvel. Um, <laughs> if, if anyone doesn't know, I've, I've jumped ship at this point. I'm on the I'm on the DC Battle Cruiser. Oh, uh, okay. You shut your dirty pie oh, hole. That's no. it. This is the last podcast, people. <laughs> well, I, I I jump ship for like comics coming out, not comics from 40 years ago. Um, so. But, uh, yeah, so Ben comes in lugging a big hunk of marble, and as we mentioned, he gets, like, paranoid, and he's like, oh, you're, you're cheating on me, who is this? Um, the scene doesn't go as long as you'd think, though. It's just a page, really. Yeah. Um, before things like, oh, okay, uh, so... And, of course, Ben recognizes the yeah. face sculpt and play immediately. Oh, that's the... Uh... Jeff Mann. Crazy billionaire Jeff Mann, who's... If he was truly on the run and hiding out and being in buildings, his millionaire, multi-million company would be on the hunt for him and everybody would know about it, blah, blah, blah. And then we cut to the arcade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is funny. Um... Power Man and Iron Fist to try to get information on the missing Jeff Mann because his multi-million dollar company has hired them secretly to keep it quiet. <laughs> yeah. So they got to find him, and Luke's playing this arcade machine. The X-Factor. Yeah. Damn you, Simon Cowell. <laughs> and uh, this is great. Uh, Luke keeps lo- He loses because there's this trick with the machine that when you get close to your goal, something pops up and then the maze changes and traps you. Um, and then Luke's like shaking his hands. He's like, "You crummy machine!" And he hits it, <laughs> and he's like he's whipping it up. it up in the air, <laughs> giving it shaking baby syndrome. And Daddy's like, "Luke, it's only a game," um, <laughs> you know. And then this this kid behind him's like, "Gee whiz, you know, uh, you really are Power Man and Iron Fist. Are you gonna smash that game to pieces?" <laughs> Nah, kid, I got something better in mind. I'm going to let my martial arts partner from Kunlun try it. So, I mean, this is, for me, this is the best part of the issue, just watching them play this <laughs> arcade game. Yeah. It's funny. I'm sure yeah. Danny concentrate and trying to outthink the game and still getting frustrated at the same time. Yeah, he also get as frustrated as Luke. Um, I like how Danny is drawn in this issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's good. Well, the, we still haven't. We're, we're coming up to the the worst panel in the entire book, but I mean, I just we'll I like his that. face in that um, panel. I don't yeah, like please. his I don't like his face in the panel below it. A couple panels below it, where like Luke is looking at the note because they they gave him like a chin strap on his mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Luke Cage is like fifty-five years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's an odd panel for sure. Um, yeah, it's a and bit, also the, it's the panel, the, 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 the panel right before it, uh, Iron Fist is now taller than Luke Cage. <laughs> yeah, Luke, Luke's leaning over though. Oh wait, no, I see what you mean. Okay, look, it is a bit wonky. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't dissect this issue. I just kind of read it. Um, not and I'm not saying like you I didn't give it the I didn't give the art the usual like if I was scrutinizing it, I just kind of rolled with it as hair style and just kind of went through the issue um, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, so Benny meets up with him, gives him a note uh yep. so there's a list of all his contacts like who who uh, this what's this guy's name again um man Jeff man yeah Jeff man. Yeah. All the people he talked to and stuff, so there's, uh, it covers people from the top corporate offices and the social register to low-class bookies in this village. Uh, so they split up, Danny goes to the big fat cats as Danny Rand, which is nice to see him investigating, like, using his, uh, resources like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the businessman side, or, like, just the, the rich, like, uh, socialite side or whatever. Um, well, not socialite, it's more of a Bruce Wayne thing. And uh, Luke is obviously taking to the streets. And in the meantime, uh, 
Ben Grimm is using one of Mr. Fantastic's fantastic fancy computers. Yeah. Which basically he pretty much gets the same list. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> the, the, he's matching the fingerprints to see if it was actually Jeff Mann. And it was him. Um, so the computer tells him... Oh. <laughs> yeah, the computer tells him who to find. Then we get Danny playing squash with this other dude. Uh, exclusive executive athletic club. Um, do we even get this guy's name? Kurt Samuel. Kurt. Yep. Yep, Kurt. So Danny's trying to get Kurt. information from him on Jeff Man. Go on. I said, and Kurt actually beats him at racquetball. Yeah, I mean, he deliberately loses so he can get information. Um, I don't know about that. Is that because if he wins, the, he won't get any information from the guy? I mean, yeah, look, look what he says. Like, uh, even so, I could easily return it, but what would happen to Samuel's caution if Danny Rand missed? So he's... I think he's doing it to sort of, um... Gotcha. Yeah. That's a horrible picture. <laughs> well, I mean, if we want to start Especially, going down that rabbit hole... Uh, well, I think they basically imply exactly what's going to go down that rabbit hole in the next panel. Oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> Look, they're just, they're just two friends going for a drink, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to sh- hit the shower together. Uh, so, he gives he gives Danny the info. Because uh, he has a big ego, I guess. He feels oh, yeah. good that he won. Um, and not only feels good that he won, you know. He's a millionaire. He knows other millionaires. Yeah. Yada, yada. Yeah. You know, the, the, the big boys club. Um yeah, that's just how they operate. And he, he uh, points him essentially to a, a uh, the fact he would never close a deal on an abandoned building on Yanty Street. So Danny he thought that was mm. odd, because he yeah. was going to Mr. Uh, Sagal here for real estate closings. And, and that sh- struck him as odd. Yeah. And then at the same time in the village, we have Luke working like Frankenstein's monster in this panel. <laughs> With no Grr. neck. Yeah. No cage, have no neck. Yeah. He's been great. No room for bolts. Um, so... Working over a local bookie who works out of a little tiny newsstand. Yeah, he, like, pulls him right up uh, by the collar. Um, <laughs> and so we get... Did this seem weird to you guys? So we have this panel with a white background where he, he's pulled him out. And then in the next panel, there's just all this detail in the back, all of a sudden. Uh-huh. And I guess it's... They wanted you to uh, concentrate on the action. Yeah, I, I guess. It's just a bit... I don't know, I was just surprised. Um, so, Louis finally squeals, yeah. and then gets a piece of metal wrapped around his neck for saying he's going to... Have him arrested for harassment. So yeah. Luke harasses the more. I originally <laughs> thought he just bent it in front of him, but I think you're right. I think he wraps it around his neck. Um, oh yeah, it's wrapped around nice. his head. Jesus, Luke. Uh, also, we got to point out the bin that he gets thrown into. Says, "Do not litter." <laughs> yeah, it's Louis trash. <laughs> and a short time later on Yancey Street. Yeah. Luke's Luke there. just found the dump. Luke goes into the dump. Says, this place is a dump. <laughs> Why would a millionaire be hanging out there? Suddenly, plaster falling from the ceiling. Footsteps, someone's upstairs. So he goes upstairs and there's Mr. Jeff Mann looking all dropey, dreary. Can barely stand. Luke's got to help him up. And then the guy runs his mouth for another page and a half. <laughs> yeah, about... he starts ranting again. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Woe is me. They're out I to get me. A company. Uh... It, got, it was getting huge. Too huge for me to control. So I had to hire consultants. And I brought these consultants in. And they started running everything. And then they took over everything. Yeah. 
It's like, yep, man, we heard you before. Uh, I guess Luke didn't, but uh, <laughs> then the thing come. So yeah, Luke's like his side of the story makes me feel like a jailer, but a contract's a contract. And so he's then, bringing him in. Yeah, the thing's like, hey, man, hold it, pal, man. Uh, and things like, hey, we ain't got a beef. Just let him go. Uh, you know, and Luke's like, no, me and Fist were hired to do a legitimate job. Uh, and the thing references Luke replacing him on the Fantastic Four, or filling in for him, which is cool. Some continuity there. That was the time when uh, the thing lost his uh, rocks. Yeah. And this big game playing old Ben Grimm. So these guys have uh, have a history. Yeah. I think she she Hulk replaced them one time too when it happened again. Mm. Yeah. And she could worse. Yeah. Um, oh, it's at least one. <laughs> And also, with the whole Alicia girlfriend thing, I think also, after that happened, he actually had another girlfriend who became inflicted with his same powers. So there was a female thing, Rocky thing, running around with Ben. Weird. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I think this was also the time, shortly after that, he got a soft spot on his head and was wearing a helmet. A lot of goofy things have happened to Ben. Yeah, that's pretty odd. Um, yeah. Uh, During the 90s? 90s, 2000, yep, something but, like that. Okay. Yeah, I was probably not reading comics by then. <laughs> yeah. Still in the womb? <laughs> unlike, <laughs> no. unlike me, that was driving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then then Danny, so man ran off, and then Danny um caught him, snatched him right up, and uh, yeah, Daddy's taking him off, and Luke fights the thing in the meantime, and uh, I'll point out that Luke and Danny are in the wrong here. True, they don't know it. Mm. I mean, they it's they it's know something's it's not quite. And then we get a cool uh, sentence here. The strongest member of the world's most famous superhero team and the mightier half of Earth's most incredible detective agency collide. Quam. Yeah, as Luke and the thing run at each other. Uh, I would say Iron Fist is mightier, given something that happens later on. But, uh, you know. Um, but their fight is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. I mean... You're destroying an entire building. Yeah. I think they actually take out two of them. Yeah, I think <laughs> so too. I think the other one's a different building. The one he's on the roof of is, is it? a different one. Yeah. And then, so. then just flips it. <laughs> and the authorities are nowhere to be found. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe so, they're busy with the alien invasion downtown, you know. Um, who knows? Uh, but, yeah, it's a cool fight. Um, it's it's more than I expected. Like, yeah, the, yeah, the thing totally topples that building down on Luke. Luke's getting this crazy, like, turning this girder into this kind of boomerang. And, uh, you know... Um, so Danny takes Ben to the corporation and they're like we're not going to discuss the whole power ranking here go on that the thing could basically smack Luke off the planet mm -hmm. so them going to, going head to head against one another is just ridiculous the thing yeah the thing seems to have the upper hand against Luke for sure during the fight so I think at this time in Luke's career he's like rated for 10 tons and thing is well over eighty, right? Uh huh. Yeah, I've never thought about uh, Luke versus the thing. There was a, there was an issue of uh, 
Spider-Man Annual. I think it was either 13 or 14, where Spider-Man ranked his his where all of his uh, all of the other hero heroes and where he belonged. And I think Power Man is a notch below the thing. So there's there's the super heavyweights where you have the Hulk. Um, mm-hmm. you've got Thor. Uh, Thor, Iron Man, Wonder Man, and a few other guys, and then just below them is where the thing is supposed to be. And I think after the, that's the heavyweights, and then the next one is where Power Man's supposed to be. So he's a notch below them. He's a notch below Thing, but Thing is a notch below. The Hulk, the super heavyweights, yeah. the Hulks. Yeah. So, because, like Carl said, there's a difference in the uh, levels of strength here. Uh, Power Man had a difficult time bending that steel bar, but it wasn't. Uh, it was easy pickings for the thing. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, I guess, yeah, I, I'm not surprised the thing would have the upper hand, and I, I didn't really know about those rankings. I didn't really think much about it. Um, but, yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah. There, were, there were people who were asking how strong Spider-Man was. So, um, in that one annual issue, they, they made that ranking. So, I wonder how everyone, what everyone thought about it. Yeah, um, and, and meanwhile in the boardroom, uh, they they insist that Danny and Luke be there to receive payment. They're like, oh, we can't pay uh, one of you without the other. Yeah, it's really weird. And Danny's got a very straight face, and he's like, um, all right, I'll get Luke. Uh, and then we get the corporation, and they suspect he laid a trap to kill them both. Why else would only one return with man? Quiet fool. He, susp- he only suspects non-payment. We shall still proceed. Um, so Danny goes back, and uh, Ben's all fired up. He's like, Iron Fist, I'm too mints and words with you two. So Danny powers up his chi into his arm, and he like does a kind of knife hand strike against the thing, and that ends that. Uh, that's able to sort of... I don't know, we don't really see how much it damages the thing, but that enables them to talk. Uh, interesting that it was a uh, knife hand and not like a um, fist, but uh, you know, yeah, I can dig it. If you look at the other panels, he hardly actually, or if never, I don't think you have seen. I see him uh, punch anything. It was always just a chop. It's like karate chop. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the other panels, you'll see it. I mean that. that... Yeah, I think I think you're right. He just chops everything in this issue. Yes. Well, I mean that that's the when he does that to the thing. That's the first time we've actually seen him attack as well, because there hasn't really been any fighting until this Luke Cage and the True. thing showdown. Um. But Luke and Danny go into this, you know, suspicious corporation, and they're standing on this giant M. <laughs> and whoa, it's a trap door. Surprise! They go down to this weird room that like gets stronger the more energy they use. Feeds off of them. Yeah. See, so, yeah, the harder they fight, the, the you know, tougher it becomes. Yeah. Um. Are we keeping you up, Connor? Uh, so. <laughs> you know. Late for him. Yeah, they're all doing oh, stuff. They're bad. fighting the room. You know, some some cool panels, I guess. Uh, and then the thing's waiting outside, and he was told to wait ten minutes, but he's not putting up with that. He's only waiting five. Yeah. Which is good. It's a big thing. And he's got a really big foot as he kicks that door down. But he makes the same mistake and stands on the <laughs> M. Stands on the M. Um, <laughs> you know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but, yeah, they, they drop thing down into uh, the thing, but the 
<laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to say the uh, I mean the thing no pun intended into the room so yeah uh yeah and they're like oh the chamber's gonna become invincible with all three of us but it actually overloads and by the way yeah. this chamber's weird it has like it fires rockets and Danny kind of slices them apart with his hand it's got like maces or spiked balls coming out and big you know all sorts of crazy stuff big t- constrictor kind of tentacle things metal tentacles um dr octopus arms you know it's uh yeah. very danger like room-esque people. yeah but yeah it overloads everything comes out at once and they trash it and they actually referenced earlier that uh, this was like the computer game that they were playing or in the first uh, few pa- first few pages. Yeah, they do. Just like the X Factor game. Yeah, the um, X Factor. And I like this line. Looks like our former employees were about to take it on the lamb with man. I don't know if that was a deliberate sort of rhyme, but uh Yeah, uh they 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 go uh, Well the thing once he's in the in the trap just uses his ultimate strength to yeah. just blow through the sidewalls getting out of the trap as it's overloading so they somehow wind up in the parking garage they stop the escape yep and there's a karate chop from Iron Fist again yep um, yeah he destroys the, the hood of the car which is cool but we never really find out what this evil corporation is up to. Why they're doing this, yeah, if anything. I don't know. I really don't. There's, like, there's no... Like, why are they trying to kill all these plan? people? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why can't you just pay Power Man and Iron Fist and move on? Like, this is... Uh, yeah. I mean, we know they want to hold on to man we know that much and they sort of used his technology and he de- and man designed that room but uh mm. yeah anyway iron fist smashing the car was cool um <laughs> yes. there was no build up there was no like fist stunt thing of iron like he just sort of lit it up and smacked it uh and then it ends with them playing the thing playing in the arcade well, you find out that, of course, Mr. Man designed the X Factor game yeah. for the arcade, and using that plan is how he built his room. power trap room in the basement of this building yeah. that they forced him to make. Yeah. But yeah, it's, and it's, now it's, the thing is addicted to playing it, going, Zingo, Zap, I'm going to get you a little so and so. It was a bit odd. Um, the whole issue was a bit odd. Like it's all really good. God, you know, feels like a filler issue. Do you oh, like, it was, like it's the, it was the thing too in one every single issue? Is a yeah, I was about issue. to say like there's no it was real all stand-alone stories. Yeah, yeah no continuing yeah, story. Yeah, it's true. There are times when they have like um, a two-parter or something. Yeah, but it's just one shots. But this one, you know, it just feel it, it just felt a bit weird. You know, the whole story stuff. You know, we were expecting a something that wasn't corporate. So I think they were trying to uh David Anthony Kraft was just trying to to incorporate the fact that uh Luke and Danny were uh heroes for hire. And so he needed Something corporate to, you know, somebody who w- was a billionaire, uh, and it was a a corporation that uh, hired them. So I think he just played around with that idea. Hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, came up with this. <laughs> that, that didn't even play that much into it, though. Really, I'm not. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was, yeah. Oh, maybe because it's for kids. So he had... True. 
you had a guy... Uh, Just put a bit of wham band zoom in there with a the video game. Yeah. Yeah. Thing like that, just for you know, because we were kids when we were reading this stuff. Yeah. And you know, like the the arcade machine was fun seeing Danny and Luke do it. Um, I mean, I, I like I just I I thought it was fine. Like I, it was a bit odd, and I think it just took it was it took weirdly long to sort of get going. But um, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't I didn't hate it or anything. What about you guys? My biggest issue was Mr. Man's constant page and a half rants. That was pretty annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we get it. Too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Other than that, it was just a goofy, fun, simple issue where you see the characters doing what they do. Yeah. Yeah, it's very straightforward and just, you know, it has to be simple enough so that the kids would understand it. I think uh, uh, I, I think the one that that's more that was more interesting was the part where uh, where there was more interaction between the thing and Alicia uh, yeah. because there was personal touch there. Yeah, and you get to feel you know the Ben Grimm's uh, insecurities because of how he thinks of himself as a monster. Yeah. And that's just kind of kind of his thing. And I haven't. It's been a while since I've read the Fantastic for a comic book from the 80s or 70s, and it reminded me of his mindset of how he really feels like a monster. Yeah. Uh, unlike his, uh, unlike the other members of the Fantastic Four, like he still feels like an outcast. Yeah, so and I think I reminded of that. It sets up his character and his relationship with Alicia well if you're just picking this up for, like, you don't really know anything about the thing or his current status quo, I think it sets it up well. Um, yeah. Yeah? All right. Uh, anything else, or shall we sign off? I'm good. All right. I'm good. <laughs> uh, I'll quickly, I'll thank our patrons. So thank you very much, Ray and Derek, for your continued support. It's awesome. It means a lot. Uh, we still haven't reached our goal yet. Uh, we are on SoundCloud now, thank God, instead of podcast garden again uh if anyone has any ideas about like soundcloud versus libsyn uh hit me up because i'm i'm you know if libsyn's better i'll switch to that but uh soundcloud has playlists so you know but anyway yeah uh get back to me on that if you know anything about it and uh yeah have a look at our patron page there's cool rewards there um yeah so until next time May your Pac-Man become onto a thing of iron. Your Pac-Man skills. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Adios. See you guys. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. Any musical images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. We do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at sons of the dragon podcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, anything you want, really. It doesn't even have to be related to Iron Fist. If you don't want it read on the air, though, make sure you mention that. You can also find us on Facebook, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon. Our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast. Our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash sons of the dragon, uh, hyphens where the spaces are. Our YouTube, Connor Carl. Just search Iron Fist Podcast and you'll find us real quick. We are also on iTunes. If you find us there, give us a review and rate us. If it's less than five stars, please say why so we can improve the show. And we're on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And last but not least, head over to our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast.wordpress.com. That's where I put all the show notes. I'd like to thank Thomas Tissot for composing the Iron Fist theme song we use at the start of our Iron Fist episodes on the podcast. I'd also like to thank Peter John Sikorsky for composing the Power Man and Iron Fist theme we use at the start of our Power Man and Iron Fist episodes. And finally, thanks to you guys for listening.